and i think i also expect the same liberal attitude but i will finish in time <laughs> try to please finish and, in time uh, yeah there is a timer in yes, yes. thank you very much i start the lecture with paying tributes to my late father and my friend mentor and guide dr gurpreet singh wonder and my teacher during internship dr paramjit singh alak so we all know that globally about 500 million adults aged between 20 to 79 years have diabetes mellitus and majority of them are type 2 diabetes and it is estimated that more than half of the patients with diabetes in india are undiagnosed so that is very very important what we have been talking for last one day is magnitude of diabetes and increasing diabetes increasing morbidity and mortality because of diabetes so major cause of mortality in diabetes is cardiovascular disease generally because of delayed diagnosis and uncontrolled diabetes mellitus under treatment of dyslipidemia because my topic is talking about the lipid management so dyslipidemia is very very important factor which increases the mortality and morbidity the unique feature of type 2 diabetes and cv risk in india requires specific guidelines for indian population and we cannot apply the western guidelines to indian population because indians are unique the prevalence of dyslipidemia is high in india and that is of atherogenic triad incorporating the elevated triglycerides low hdl c levels normal insulin or mildly raised ldl c levels it contributes to the residual risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in diabetes even after achieving the ldlc goals because of the unique features of dyslipidemia in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk in india indian type 2 diabetes mellitus is increased and the lipid association of india and rssdi has proposed the updated risk stratification for ldlc goals on major atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk factors which we all know and they are enumerated in this slide so the indian consensus statement by lipid association of india it adopted the international guidelines for indians which suited to the indian population they have provided flexibility and it has released the consensus statement in 2016 and updated subsequently incorporating the cv risk factor assessment the treatment goals and targets the treatment recommendations the follow up monitoring as well as the safety assessments the india specific guidelines and challenges what rssdi consensus recommendations for dyslipidemia management in diabetes expresses that genetic phenotypic cultural and socio economic variability among the indian population as compared to west emphasize the need for country specific recommendations and we must not follow the western recommendations for almost all the diseases and lai and rssdi has provided the lower ldlc goals for indians based on the recent randomized trials and what we are emphasizing now is ldlc is primary treatment target and non hdlc is the co primary target so we are all talking about at present ldlc cholesterol and we have seen that since 1980s the cholesterol ldlc cholesterol goals have been decreased over a period of years which is very beautifully depicted in this slide over a period of time and increasing scientific evidence has led to general consensus lower is better goal for ldlc which has led to concerns about risk of intensively lowering ldlc and various researchers and academicians have raise the risk that if we decrease ldlc to certain level it might produce the health risk of different kinds and aggressive lowering of ldlc has been proved till today we don't know in the future whether some evidence comes but today the ldlc goals lowering the goals is safe and it is effective therapeutic target naturally I'll occurring ldlc levels are present in numerous populations and virtually all of us are born with ldlc less than 40 and there are different evidences which say that ldlc is lower 
without any health risks. So treatment approach has changed over the period of time from high intensity statin concept to high intensity lipid lowering strategy. So we are concentrating on lipid lowering rather than increasing the dose of statins with azetamide, with PCSK9 inhibitors and bampidoic acids. So these are the three drugs associated with the strategy of REP, the intensive lipid lowering instead of intensified the statin therapy. So these are the potential categories which were risk stratification before and they have added the new categories of high risk that is category A and category B and depending upon this we might have to stratify our drug treatment. So this is the slide which tells us about the LDLC cholesterols in high risk, very high risk and extremely high risk and you will see that high risk it is less than 100, very high risk it is less than 70 and now we are targeting less than 55 for extremely high risk group. So again this is the RSSDI consensus recommendations for high risk we are going in for the Indian consensus statement for high risk instead of 100 we have lowered it to 70 and very high risk up to 50 and extremely high risk we are targeting less than 30 that is the difference between the Indian guidelines and the western guidelines we have the lower targets of LDLC levels and how do we proceed on very first visit either we get fasting lipid levels done or it is non-fasting lipid levels done and after second visit we do the reverse that is if it is fasting then we go for non-fasting and if it is non-fasting, we go for the fasting levels. And these are the advantages for fasting and non-fasting. I am skipping this slide because of constraint of time. The parameters, and we all know the non-pharmacological therapy has to be instituted when we think of lipid management. And these are the ingredients of non-pharmacological therapy. And this is again the newer guidelines, what the topic is. This, the new targets. So these are the new targets for LDLC levels. I am discussing only LDLC because the concentration, the focus is on LDLC. So that is extremely high risk group. It is less than 30. Uh, the optimum goal of non-HDL is less than 60. And we combine the drugs to achieve this goal. So this is the very beautiful slide to tell us how do we proceed in low risk group, moderate risk group and high risk group. In high risk group, we are targeting the LDLC level and we are starting treatment if it is more than 70. Add statins, that is moderately intensification of statin treatment. And if the goal is not achieved, we increase the statin dose. And still, if it is not increased, we go for the treatment that is adding azetamide, bampidoic acid, or PCSK9 inhibitors. So again, this is very beautiful slide telling us the same protocol that if we are not achieving the targets with intensifying the statin therapy, we add azetamide and again we add PCSK9 inhibitors or bampidoic acid depending upon our own preferences. So these are the drugs what we call it as a high intensity therapy that is atorvastatin 40 to 80, rosvastatin 20 to 40 and moderate intensity is the lower dose, but in high intensity, the guidelines are recommending atorvastatin and rosvastatin only. So classification, the triglyceride levels are also important because of atherogenic, uh, the tendency in Indians, and the optimal level is less than 100, the normal is less than 150, the borderline is 150 to 99, and so on. So again, once we are targeting the lipids, the uh, triglycerides are also coming up good and this slide depicts how do we proceed according to the triglyceride levels. So that is, measure the LDLC levels accordingly and calculate the non-HDLC if the triglycerides are 150 to 99 or it is 200 to 499 and lifestyle interventions are very, very important for all the lifestyle diseases especially in dyslipidemia and 
we add statin if LDLC's levels are more and azetamide to achieve LDLC levels. So, my dear friends, take home message the lipid lowering therapy is key to improving CV outcome in people with diabetes. Lifestyle intervention in combination with high intensity statin and non statin therapy are first line management strategies to achieve LDLC goals. The changing strategy for high intensity statin concept to high intensity lipid lowering therapy is the call of the day. So, we are taking out the LDLC levels, whether it is with high intensity statins or we need to add azetamide, bempedoic acid, or PCSK9. So, this is the summary that is, risk stratification has to be done, and accordingly, we increase the treatment strategies. So, set the lipid goals that is, LDLC goal, whether it is moderate risk, high risk, or very high risk and triglyceride, we are targeting less than 150, and initiate and escalate the lipid lowering therapy based on established goals. And what are those established goals? We have already discussed in high risk, less than 70, less than 50, and less than 30. So LDLC statin, moderate intensity, we are using atorvastatin, rosvastatin, silvastatin, pitavastatin, and in high intensity, the true drugs are recommended, that is atorvastatin, and rosvastatin, and for triglycerides, we can use statins, fibrates, serogritazar, and omega-3 fatty acids. So this is how we are going to proceed with the new targets in lipid lowering therapy, especially in Indian population. Thank you very much, and I invite.